Hi everyone, my name is Yael Cohen from the Tel Aviv Sorosky Medical Center in Tel Aviv. And on behalf of my co-authors, I'm pleased to share with you the results of the Redirect One study, which is a combination of teclistimab and talcetimab simultaneously for patients with relapsed refractory myeloma. This abstract was recently presented by me at the, the ASCO meeting in Chicago, and then later by Professor Mateos at the IHA. And actually, this is the first trial to combine together two bispecific uh, antibodies uh, for treatment of uh, malignancy. So teclistimab is uh, uh, the first and only approved BCMA bispecific uh, uh, to treat the uh, myeloma and uh, with uh, uh, response rates of uh, over 60% in the heavily pretreated uh, patients in the Majestic 1 trial, and responses are, are, have been shown to be durable. And telquetamab is uh, an advanced GPRC5D directed by specific, and uh, this also has shown uh, response rates uh, above 70% in the Monumental 1 uh, trial. So the idea behind targeting two distinct antigens simultaneously is the, to reduce a population of patients with extramedullary disease. So here you can see the design of the trial, and there was a dose escalation, uh, extensive uh, regimen uh, uh, tested here to come up with phase uh, two regimen, which was teclisumab at three milligrams per kg and telquetamab at 0.8 milligrams per kg administered every uh, two weeks. The primary objective was, of course, in the phase one trial to val evaluate the uh, safety of the regimen. And then uh, we also looked at the anti-cancer uh, activities and patients could participate if they had measurable myeloma and uh, they had to have uh, been intolerant or refractory to the established therapies, uh, including uh, a PI and IMID and an anti-CD38 uh, uh, antibody. And I will be presenting uh, the results of uh, the entire patients, including the trial, as well as those in the recommended phase two dose. So here you can see the patient characteristics. 93 patients were enrolled in the study, of them 34 in the recommended phase two dose, which were uh, quite similar in their characteristics to the entire population. And you can see these were very uh, tough to treat uh, patients. They had a high rate, uh, over 30% of them had an extra medullary plasma cytoma, four prior lines of uh, therapy, uh, uh, quite a few, over 20%, they were prior, previously exposed to a BCMA-targeted uh, uh, treatment, and uh, over 75% uh, were triple refractory, and uh, uh, almost all were uh, refractory to their last line of, uh, of therapy. So safety, uh, all in all, uh, was quite manageable and very consistent with that of the monotherapies. You can see here the heme toxicity. So uh, neutropenia uh, was uh, occurring in uh, over 60% of the patients, but only a small proportion, 12.9%, uh, had febrile uh, in neutropenia, even less so in the recommended phase two uh, dose. And there were no discontinuations due to hematologic uh, adverse events. Uh, as far as non-hematologic events, you can see them uh, uh, here. Uh, the rate of a grade three to four non-hematologic events uh, uh, was uh, relatively uh, uh, low and, uh, and manageable. As you can see here, uh, there were five ICANS events in three patients, but uh, uh, they were grade one uh, uh, and uh, only uh, uh, there was one transient uh, grade three. Uh, all patients uh, recovered. And uh, again, the AE profile was consistent with the uh, monotherapies. And if we focus on the uh, skin and the uh, and, uh, mouth and nail toxicities uh, that are uh, known with telquetamab, again, here we see that uh, most of them uh, uh, were, were uh, in, in low grades. And uh, again, few discontinuations uh, on this background. Uh, cytokine release syndrome uh, occurred in uh, 76% uh, of uh, the patients, but you can see it was uh, primarily grade one and uh, two. The onset was uh, a median of, uh, of two days, uh, and it lasted about uh, two days. About uh, a quarter of the patients required the tocilizumab to manage uh, um, this, uh, this uh, CRS. Uh, and if we summarize uh, uh, all the uh, AEs, so the, the discontinuation rate was, uh, was low. At the 6.5%, there were six deaths on the study, and they were all due to 
infection. If we uh, uh, focus for a moment on the infections, then we can see uh, that uh, uh, over 80% of the patients had infections. However, grade three to four, the RP2R uh, were less than 48%. And uh, it's also important to note that the uh, IVIG was only uh, administered uh, to less than half the patients, even though most of them had hypogamma globulinemia. So uh, this could be an important uh, measure to be applied and uh, to improve uh, safety as far as infections uh, going uh, forward. Uh, moving to uh, efficacy. So uh, in a median follow-up of uh, 13.4 uh, months for the entire cohort, uh, we had an overall response rate of 86.6%. Uh, and among the patients in the recommended phase two dose, the response was as high as 96.3%. Uh, and uh, the uh, duration, the median duration of response was not reached. So the responses were, were durable. They occurred fast uh, within about two months. And uh, the time to best response was about four months. The median PFS across the, all, all the cohort was uh, 20.9 a month. When we focus on the patients with extra medullary disease, which uh, we know are really tough to treat, and with other medications, we know we can expect a response rate ranging from 5 to 40%. Uh, percent. Uh, and these uh, were, were uh, specifically soft tissue plasma cytomas that were not uh, uh, connected to, to bones. Uh, so you can see here across all those levels, the overall response was 71.4%, and those at the a target a dose schedule, a 85.7% uh, response. Again, the responses were uh, uh, durable. You can see uh, with a PFS of 12.9% across all a uh, uh, dose level. Here is an example of a patient of mine. This is 74-year-old uh, male, a uh, heavily pretreated, six prior lines. Uh, he received virtually every a registered drug for myeloma, including gabalantamab, including selinexor, all IMIDs, all PIs, a DARA, elotuzumab, a transplant. And you can see this patient a, a had a very aggressive a, a relapse. You can see a large uh, axillary mass here uh, measuring over 12 centimeters in, in diameter. And uh, this was uh, in October of uh, 21, just before he was enrolled to the study. And Virtually within a few days, uh, uh, this uh, huge mass uh, just melted away before our eyes. And uh, you can see his first post-treatment uh, uh, PET-CT here. The mass was uh, no longer evident, couldn't be uh, measured. And the patient uh, remains in deep response until uh, uh, this very day. So to summarize, eticlistamab, talketamab uh, is the first ever reported uh, combination of dual bispecific uh, uh, drugs to treat uh, heme malignancies with a uh, 96% overall response in a, a administration every uh, two weeks uh, in patients who were uh, a triple class uh, exposed and uh, a very uh, a high risk and uh, uh, high risk patients and with the resistant myeloma. So these uh, kind of results are competitive with CAR T cell therapies. Uh, Specifically in patients with extra medullary uh, uh, soft tissue plasma cytomas, there was a, a response rate uh, above the 70% uh, over the, all the doses, 85.7% in the recommended uh, phase two uh, uh, regimen, and uh, the median duration of response uh, was, not, uh, was not reached uh, during this uh, follow-up. The safety of the combination was consistent with the monotherapies, no new or additive uh, toxicities, and uh, these results are very encouraging, and uh, hopefully further studies uh, will follow, and an extramedullary uh, a disease cohort is about uh, to open uh, soon and to further enroll patients. So uh, I'd like to thank all the patients and caregivers that participated in the trial, and of course, all the team that, uh, that took uh, a part. The trial was funded by uh, Janssen, and uh, thank you for your attention.